Hi, and welcome back to The Restoration. I typically don't do this, but I'd like to dedicate this episode to my good friend and my co-worker, Rich Hall. Please know that our thoughts and our prayers are with you. And I know my humor is a little bit childish and corny, but I, I hope this can put a smile on your face. On this exciting episode, we get the frame back together and get it on its front wheels. But first, I have to tell you, I was just reading this article about a cannibal who ate his mother's sister. Well, I guess technically that'd make him an anteater. <laughs> <laughs> that one caught me off guard, Jason. Good one. <laughs> I got a couple of uh, sensors, fuel tank uh, filter, uh, bearing race, bearing, and the... Built. This is the last hurrah, the, the last of the mild days before it turns really winter. So I decided to get out some automotive primer and put it on the hood here and just testing out this gun with automotive primer in it. It didn't atomize like the, the other gun, but it did once the paint got on there or primer got on there, it, it laid down fairly flat. Well, this, boys and girls, is why I was in such a rush to do uh, <laughs> to do the painting. I knew this was coming. This is this is two weeks after it was 70 degrees. Now it's 16 degrees out here, and we had like almost a foot of snow last night. So, well, it's time to get the bevel bit, bevel gearbox that is back together. Um, nice and clean down in there. And time to give it a shot. Well, I got it on by starting it right there on that little lip and pushing it around, but it was not easy by any stretch of the imagination. There we go. Okay. That's in place. Okay, now this is going to slide down in here, but first, I'm going to go press in the oil seal that goes right there. So I oiled up the oil seats and the uh, oil seals, put the oil seals in and the bearings. Well, I'm hoping I don't have to press this in, but my guess is that I'm going to have to press it in. Goes right down into here. First thing I would do is lube everything up now and try to get it in there. Okay. Oh, it went in. Awesome. Now I just got to do is lock this baby down now. Time to get the last piece of this puzzle together, which is this gear down in here. This bevel gear box has fought me since the beginning. I'm using heat, I'm using freezer, I'm using everything I got to try to get this thing back together. Fight. I'll take it though. 
Well, coming up is that ring I told you to remember, and I'm using it to drive that oil seal in. Well, it's actually part of the oil seal. So everything you see me doing here, putting all that stuff in, I had to take it back out and then put that back into the oil seal. So I had to do this twice. All right, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this and we're trying to get it around the edges there, see? Mm, I got and it. You're just gonna fill the edges up. You okay. wanna try to get it down there. And just keep pushing don't, it back to the edge. Don't try and get it down there? Yeah, you don't wanna go down here. You wanna oh, okay. get it all in the side. Hit it at the top. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to get the fix out. This is cleaned up hardware that goes on the uh, differential side. And this is the non-clean stuff that goes on the other side. So time to get this cleaned up. And here it is, fresh out of the sandblaster. Well, here goes nothing. I'll try to do the reassembly him. Well, I don't realize it at the time, but I'm wasting a lot of time here trying to get this thing together off of the transmission. What I need to be doing is getting it onto the transmission and assembling it on there. And talk about messy. This grease was everywhere. All right, so I decided to go with a plan B. Try to get this thing on first. Let's see if that works. Yeah. All right. There. Okay. Now here's where I need you, Connie. I need you to hold this thing from tipping like this. There you go. Okay, we're going to try this again. Now when I say try this again, I had already tried it once. A lot of the grease gets pushed out on the other side. What a messy, messy job that is. Now what you see me messing with is the grease seal. And I'm telling you what, that thing was crazy hard to get on. It's, it's like a flat rubber band. And I tried to get it on there and I couldn't so I tried the other side now I'm back and I got it on there finally but man did that take some time to do and now you see my son really helping me And this is what she looks like fully assembled. Man, it took some time, but it's back together. One of the things that I'm looking at on here is on this reassembly. There's a little bit of a gap in there. And so on that steering back and forth. So what I'm going to do. It looks like about oh, an eighth of an inch or so. I'm going to make a bushing so that there's no play into that. I'll make that on the lathe. Well, I dropped that big one inch and an eighth socket on there and knocked the chip out. So I just put a little paint in there. This is on the bottom of the frame. So I just kind of degreased it. Took a brush, put that paint in there and covered it up. It's a 100% chance that once you get some paint on something, Something's going to fall on it and chip it. Crazy. 
Okay, here's my table of hardware. And um, as you can see, we got the bevel gearbox numbered stuff here. And it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, also, I, as I was taking that apart, I labeled them in reverse order. So I should be able to put them in 83, 84, all the way up to 100. If I could go back in time, I'd label them a little bit better with a little bit more detail on it because it's been so long I've forgotten. But this is all the stuff that I just labeled as parts but without putting them in order like the blade bracket and stuff like that. This, as I started taking it off, I started putting it in order of how I took it apart. So that'll help me a little bit on trying to get it back together. Well, I put some pipe dope on both of these for the bevel gear box. Got that tightened up and wipe off that excess here in a second. And man, I'm here to tell you, here are my tools up here, my painted frame down here, and I showed you the one chip, and wouldn't you know it, I dropped another ratchet on there, another chip, and then my table fell on it, a third chip. So probably not a good idea for this thing to be right there, so I gotta figure out where to put it. This is stuff off the steering column. Needs to be clean, degreased, and de-rusted. Got the grease off of it. Now I'm gonna get the rust off of it with the evapor rust. The evapor rust did a great job at taking the rust off, especially like off the machine surface. Now on the bolt heads that were so pitted, I kind of put that out in the sandblaster later. Well, I made that thrust washer on the lathe and was off on the sides. It's too thick. But I had bought a washer earlier and that fits fine. It's perfect size to be the thrust washer for that part. Well, here are those Preston bushings that are in there. You can see there's one on this side, one on the other. And here's the other one. I'm going to load this up with grease. Get that in there. Get it on the tractor. Once again, historic steps here. Those all greased up and going in. This thrust washer here. Now we'll get this one. Now you'll get to see why I had to get the bevel gearbox and the transmission back together because they're both an integral part of the frame. There are a couple of shims on this side here that uh, go against the seal and so I'm putting a little bit of grease on them to hold them in place while I put this other side on. What you're seeing on this video that happens in 20 minutes actually took 40 some hours and a lot of going to the hardware store buying bolts. Uh, there were a couple of missing bolts, uh, washers, things that I needed like that and that would chew up a lot of the days so I'd start working but end up having to, to stop to go buy stuff. Well, with the back half of the frame on, now it's time to prepare the paint chips that I knocked out. Well, I put this thing on here. I'm hoping this is how it goes. I can't really tell. It looks like uh, it goes like this. The other way, there's too much of a gap in here. And this is for the, uh, the steering. So, and also, I... 
I was looking at the paperwork, I mean the uh, the plans, the drawings, and it looks like my father or somebody must have taken this bolt off because they had the, the nut on this side. But according to the, the book, it looks like the, the bolt goes through this way. So I redid that and time to get some wheel stuff on here. According to the, the book, this is how it goes on there, but there is such a gap but down here or up here that I can't, I can't believe it was designed like that. And coming off, there wasn't such a gap, so there had to be some other spacer or washer in here. So I went to the store and bought something, and I'm going to stick that on there because I just don't like how that fits. Well, guys, taking a really good look at that bottom washer that went on there, I do believe there's slack in there because of this wear on here. So I'm glad I did buy that other uh, washer. So I'm going to stick another washer on there, another type of spacer, and hopefully take the slack out of that. All right, so I'm going to take that store-bought washer. Let's put this on here. That should take up some of the slack. And we'll bring that up to there. And let's see this. See, there's still going to be a little bit of slack in there. I don't know how much you need, but I'm going to stick this last little spacer I bought. Put it on there and see what we get. I think that's much better. It's just got like a oh a sixteenth of a of an inch play in that. Yeah, I think that's what we're needing. Now these are small pieces of brass plugs that I cut off, and I'm gonna stick it down in the holes that connect to the axle so that they don't leave those big old marks in it that it does. I don't know if that's the approved way of doing it, but I'm going to really torque down on that because it's a softer metal and hopefully it won't leave those dents in the axle. I was pretty lucky because there are two seals that uh, go on those fronts and they have a little rubber here and metal on the back. Well, this one there's no rubber on it. So I was able to find new it's a new part number but got new seals they're actually uh, Briggs and Stratton so let's get the front tires on well I used to have a bearing packer but my brother has it so I had to pack these bearings by hand and once again guys messy messy messing around with this grease Ta-da! Well, uh, she's on the front wheels and the back wheels not quite yet. Um, there's a couple things I'll show you here. The reason I'm kind of trying to hold off and not put the back wheels on yet is there are pulleys that go here, 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 and here. And instead of trying to fight around the wheels, right now I'm going to just Leave it here till I restore those pulleys. Those pulleys need to be restored. And then I can get the back wheels on and this will be a rolling chassis. Not bad though, I'm um, quite happy. Uh, as you can see, a lot of the hardware, the fastener type stuff, um, it needs to be protected somehow. And what I think I'm gonna do is just take the paint brush and uh, brush some paint onto there. Anywho's, there she goes. Shh, quiet ladies, quiet. It's time for tractor chat. Hi, and welcome back to tractor chat, the only golden globe award winning tractor talk show. For those of you who are just tuning in, you have missed a crazy cool show. Denise Richards was here, Denise. 
Now, when most men hear the name Denise Richards, you naturally think diesel fuel pumps. But we learned today, not only is she an expert on the entire diesel fuel system, but on the gas fuel system as well. A hot Hollywood starlet and an expert on all things fuel related. Wait a minute. My producers are saying we only have time for one more viewer letter. This one is coming to us from Selena Gomez out of Malibu, California. And it says, Dear Jester, 1963, my name is Selena Gomez and I am a hot Hollywood starlet. As a matter of fact, I'm so good looking when Spanish men lay eyes on me, they say, Achihuahua. Now, for my non-Spanish speaking audience, that translates, gee whiz, she is a nice looking lady and probably has a nice personality. Jester, I enjoy watching El Tractor Chato on the Spanish channel Telemundo. And we were just wondering, when are you going to sing a Spanish tractor love song? Well, you know, that's a good question, Selena Gomez. And to be honest with you, Jennifer Lopez and I are writing a Spanish tractor love song as we speak. Oh, breaking news, breaking news. This just in hot off the presses. It seems that the East Coast supermodels have accused the West Coast hot Hollywood starlets of deflating their tires during a recent tractor pull. Well, folks, let's just hope that this doesn't start the East Coast versus West Coast war like we had in the 90s, where those two groups of women got into it quite a bit, where there was a lot of hair that got pulled and a lot of fingernails that got broken. Well, that's all the time we have today on Tractor Chat. See you next time. Same Tractor time, same Tractor channel. Hi, and welcome back to Tractor Chat. The only golden... <laughs> Yeah. Before you come up to the bedroom, yeah. can you grab the blanket out of the dryer? Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. That's one of the daredevils. Okay, let's go to bed. Hi. I thought I was doing a good job. Hello. I'm stuck in a box. What's going on? Got some kid who licks his lock and bites him. Why is he doing that? Because he said he's crazy.